Hello, hello. Welcome to the second practical planning lecture. Now, last lecture, I asked you to do some homework, uh, which is the question 4 in Appendix B. This is a single variable experiment involving simple harmonic motion. Now, let's take a look at this experiment. A cantilever is widely found in construction, notably in cantilever bridges and balconies. Basically, anything that's hanging out from the support is called a cantilever. Now, it can be represented as a wooden rule. As a, support, as a result of being supported only at one end, a cantilever can oscillate when it's subjected to external forces such as wind. So now, we want to design a laboratory experiment to investigate how the period of oscillation T it depends on the overlanging length L of the rule. So we may assume the following apparatus is available the wooden ruler, sorted mass, stopwatch, and G clamp. So we should draw a diagram to show the arrangement of the apparatus and show particular attention to these are all quite standard. Okay. Now this is the diagram that I've drawn over here. As you can see, I've put a table and then I've attached a G clamp okay, to hold a wooden rule and a sorted mass with a tape. So interestingly, I've drawn the ruler a bit bent. Over here, I've drawn a little stopwatch to, to remind myself that I should use a stopwatch okay, to measure the time. And also, I've drawn a little fiducial marker. A fiducial marker is basically a retort stand with a pin so that I can use it to judge the oscillation of the ruler. Now, let us begin. The standard, okay, it's quite nice to always start with the same line so that at least we know how to get started. Set up the apparatus as shown. Now the basic procedure is the experiment will vary the length of the ruler and measure, uh, sorry, vary the overhanging length of the ruler uh, and then me measure the period of oscillation of the ruler. So let us begin with the method. Now uh, these are the control variables. Ensure the position of the slotted mass remains the same through every trial by taping it to the ruler and ensure that the same ruler is used for every trial because we want to make the material of the ruler and the properties of the ruler stays the same. The ruler should be clamped tightly to the table to prevent it from shifting during the trial. So this one controls the position of the ruler. So now that we've got our control variables set up, let's talk about how we're going to measure what we need to measure. Now measure the length of the ruler from the edge of the table to the center of the slotted mass, center of slotted mass, using the markings on the ruler. So interestingly enough, we can use the ruler to measure itself. Okay. Now displace the slotted mass slightly vertically and allow it to oscillate. Now here is the key important parts of an oscillation experiment. For every oscillation experiment, you don't time just one oscillation. You must let it oscillate for a certain number of times so that the total time for oscillations exceeds 10 seconds. All right, you don't just measure one time. So you measure until the total time exceeds uh, 10 seconds. Now the period of oscillation is given by t equals t over n, where t is the total time for n oscillations. Okay, now repeat seven to nine. Basically we shake it three times and then take the average period. Okay, then after we got uh, three readings for one length, we're going to shorten the length again and then repeat from 6 to 10 until 6 sets of data are obtained. Okay, so we repeat three times and take the average and then we repeat at, and we get 6 sets of data are obtained. Now notice that in the question, we're not given any relationship. Since we're not given any relationship, we are going to use a uh, power law uh, t is equals to kl to the power of n, okay, uh, where n, where k and n are constants to be determined. So whenever no equation is given, we will make our own equation using the power law, okay. So now since uh, the power law uh, can be uh, so-called linearized using logarithms, by taking logarithms of every side, we get n log l plus log k. So this allows us to plot a graph of log t against log k, uh, sorry, log l over here, my mistake, right, plot log t against log l, 
If the relationship is valid, a straight line graph of gradient n and vertical intercept log k will be obtained. So that's enough for the analysis of the results. Now what about the quality of the results? To ensure that our results are good quality, one of the things that we should do is that we should use an optical pin attached to a retort stand to use as a fiducial marker. And that's the reason why I put this fiducial marker over here. It is Now, we can't just write to put a fiducial marker. We have to explain in what way does it help our experiment. Now, a fiducial marker helps us to determine the start and stop points of the oscillation more precisely. Next, we want to keep the amplitude of oscillation small and consistent, all right? Because uh, large oscillations might not be simple harmonic. As you know, pendulum oscillations are not simple harmonic if the oscillations are very large. Next, let's write something about preliminary readings. Now, if you play this experiment in your mind, you know that when the ruler gets shorter and shorter, the oscillations are going to get faster and faster. Until you get so short and the oscillations go, go, that will be way too fast to measure, right? So we'll take preliminary readings to determine what's the shortest length of the ruler at which the oscillations become too fast to count and make sure that we do not reach this minimum length. Okay, now another thing that we can improve on a reading is that the slotted mass is pretty large. So where are we going to measure it from? So we'll mark the midpoint of the slotted mass using a marker so that we can ensure the reading of the length is made to the same point for every trial. Now, Finally, we come to safety. So what could happen? Now, because this mass is shaking very violently, so it could presumably fly off and hit somebody in the face, maybe. So we take the slotted mass securely to prevent the mass from falling, otherwise it could fly off or injure someone. And then, if it does fall, we'll put a rubber mat below the slotted mass to catch it in case it falls. And ensure covered shoes are worn in the lab to prevent injury. So, would you like to mark yourself and see how many marks uh, from this uh, experiment? Okay. Now, uh, you should uh, obtain around uh, 12, a total of 12 marks for this experiment. See if you can get any of the uh, experiments uh, marks correct. Okay.